Brian Williams hey, ventured over to Moscow to interview Edward Snowden. It's the first in-depth, in-person interview of the, uh, the NSA leaker, and the videos actually turned out pretty awesome. He defended what he did, his idea of what the, the purpose of journalism is, his idea of what patriotism really means in the modern day. And so we're going to play a few of the clips of that video. Uh, you have done, quote, significant and irreversible damage to the nation. He said there is, quote, concrete proof that terrorist groups and others are taking action and making changes, and it's going to make our job tougher. And this amounts to telling our enemy our playbook. So what's interesting is that we see the exact same language, the exact same accusations uh, being leveled against whistleblowers, being labeled against any critic of any government program. Uh, throughout history, throughout time, Daniel Ellsberg got the exact same language leveled against him by the Nixon administration. They said it was going to cause grave damage, that it was irreversible harm, that our national security had been harmed, that he was going to put American lives at risk. But we've had so many years, decades, since Daniel Ellsberg's uh, Pentagon Papers were revealed, and yet none of that came to pass. So they apparently have concrete proof that he has uh, irreversibly harmed American interests. Unfortunately, the only way we're going to see that concrete proof is if another person like Edward Snowden leaks it. <laughs> <laughs> the only way we're going to get the government documents. Um, so I think that that was a, I mean, when we watched this before the, the show, you were nodding along with him. Um, we early on made the comparison with Ellsberg, and I think he makes a very good point there. People say, but uh, people, the critics of, Dan, uh, of Snowden will say, hey, stay in the United States. Say Daniel Ellsberg didn't run. He didn't leave. Okay. Uh, good point. Uh, the other thing is, uh, they didn't torture. Back then, we weren't torturing people like we do now. So they tortured uh, Bradley Manning, Chelsea Manning. So maybe that would be a disincentive for you to stay here to be tortured. We also mm -hmm. tortured Jose Padilla, by the way. So uh, they tortured Bradley Manning for a year. Okay, so maybe that's why you don't want to stay. And plus, he, uh, Daniel Ellsberg, by the way, calls Edward Snowden a hero and said that it, he was right to leave the country. So that ends that criticism yeah. of Edward Snowden. That should end it. It won't end it. People will keep bringing this up, but it should end it. It won't. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that criticism, uh, I think we're going to address that a little bit later in the video, right? But um, to uh, Snowden's original point here about how this is the same exact language throughout history is spot on because that, he's right. Uh, every single time you do something that the government does not like, the government claims that you are hurting the nation. You are threatening the lives of our beautiful children. And if they die, their blood is on your hands because you did something we did not like as the government. And it's the same tired nonsense every single time. And, um, and, and the problem is that there's no transparency here, none whatsoever. There's no transparency here on this program. They didn't tell us what's going on. And again, they don't tell us what that concrete and irreversible harm that he's yeah. done to our country is. They won't even define it vaguely. Like, I'm not saying you have to show, like, this agent was killed on this day because mm -hmm. of what you did. But they can't, they, they don't even vaguely allude to, oh, this cell suddenly became quiet after the revelations. They, they don't even make up something. It would be simple enough to make something up, but they don't even go to that effort. They never, um, they, but they'll never also, they never couple that with, well, he's made us less safe, but he did stop the government doing all that unconstitutional legal shit. So, yeah. he, 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 they never well, say that. He at least raised the possibility they would stop it. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, at least so far in the debate over possible reforms in Congress, they don't seem willing to make any significant changes. Do you want, do you want to make his left safe? Spending $6 billion in a no-bid contract for Bruce Allen Hamilton to continue data, data mining uh, and not spending that money more efficiently elsewhere. That makes us yeah. less safe. Uh, having us drop drones indiscriminately in other parts of the world and killing people who are not guilty of any crime, yeah. other than having the wrong cell phone perhaps, and killing hundreds and hundreds of uh, um, civilians, that makes us less safe. Yeah. And uh, you know, blaming all of this on Edward Snowden as if he is the one who is bringing about these problems. If, if any problems happen, they're gonna be laid at his feet. That makes us less safe because we're not we're not smartly and and judiciously and intelligently addressing real problems that we have. Uh, we've been talking about sort of some of the history of the things that America has done to generate uh, opposition to our policies, to generate new terrorists. He talked specifically about how the U.S. has used uh, sort of the memory and legacy of 9-11. Let's go back up. I take the threat of terrorism seriously. Uh, and I think we all do. And I think it's really disingenuous for, for the government to invoke uh, and sort of scandalize our memories to sort of 
sort of exploit the, the national trauma that we all suffer together and work so hard to come through to justify programs that have never been shown to keep us safe, but cost us liberties and freedoms that we don't need to give up, and our Constitution says we should not give up. And I'll say this, he is one articulate man. Yeah. He is. That was excellent. Yeah. Coward. Coward. <laughs> traitor. Traitor. Coward. Yeah. Traitor. Bad, bad person. I mean, I have to imagine he spent a lot of his time in Moscow sort of thinking this through. He probably did that for several months in advance of stealing the documents and leaking them. But yeah, he, he's done his, his history work, he's done his research. Um, and I, I think that when you look at what he says, when you think about what he says, and you compare it to the attacks, which we're going to show shortly, coming from people, people like Peter King, people like John Boehner, I mean, it's hard not to be on his side. Now, uh, uh, one of the most common criticisms of him is that he went to Russia because he wants to work for Vladimir Putin. He wants to help him invade Ukraine or something like that. Um, he talks specifically about the accusations about him colluding with uh, the Putin regime. So I have no relationship with the Russian government at all. I'm, I've never met uh, the Russian president. Um, I'm not supported by the Russian government. I'm not taking money from the Russian government. I'm not a spot. Uh, and he goes on to say why he ended up there in the first place in this book. Do you see yourself as a patriot? I did. You know, I, I think patriot is a word that's... that's thrown around so much that it can be devalued nowadays. But being a patriot doesn't mean prioritizing service to government above all else. Being a patriot means knowing when to protect your country, knowing when to protect your constitution, knowing when to protect your country from the, the violations of, and encroachments of adversaries. And those adversaries don't have to be foreign countries. So again, obviously he's been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of philosophizing about sort of the, the purpose of patriotism. We are in America, we're used to just, you know what a patriot is? It's an overweight guy tromping around the woods of Michigan with an assault rifle. Like that's what a patriot is. No, it's someone who's willing to sacrifice his relationships, his livelihood, even where he lives and, and flee to a place where he doesn't know anyone, he doesn't belong there, but he was willing to do it because he thought that that's what he needed to do to keep America safe. That's what a patriot is. Yes, because America, the United States, is really an idea, mm -hmm. right? The idea is liberty, freedom, and that's what he's really committed to in our Constitution. That's the idea that America is that he's more committed to than certainly Barack Obama is, or John Kerry, or the Russian people in a single second. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, first, I don't like the words patriot and, and traitor and these jingoistic terms because they're so self-serving. Uh, I don't like status like I'm the only one who sees me. Maybe if you was a Russian, then you see that I'm the sacred and it doesn't matter if if we live where we currently live today it's not america anymore if those rights are are yeah. extinguished yeah yeah and, and preserving those rights uh you know at your own self peril uh is i guess the most patriotic thing to do yeah yeah we we hear a lot of talk at least from certain corners of the country about people's rights and how much they respect them. But they never seem to be the most important rights, like our actual privacy rights, our rights to have an election that means something, our, our right for our voice to mean something politically. It's always just the country. Like, that's the only thing. The, the thing that they say is supposed to protect all of the other rights, at the end of the day, seems to be the only thing they care about protecting at all. Um, but, okay, so... Let's go ahead. Uh, we've got uh, Snowden talking about uh, why it is that he handed over all the documents. There's an accusation that he was a human being. I don't like I'm the only one who sees the Russian government. Maybe if it was in my shoes, then you see that I'm leaving. 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 I'm lea
solely to the institutions of the press. The best way to make sure that, for example, the Russians can't break my fingers and, and compromise information or, or hit me with a bag of money until I give them something was not to have it at all. Now, I, I do have to say, I don't know if I fully believe what he says about what happened in his time in Russia. Not because I think that he's secretly a Russian sympathizer who wanted to help him out. But once you're there, I mean, the idea that he's never spoken to the Vladimir Putin, I find hard to believe. The idea that the, the Russian government has been so benevolent that they haven't tried to put any pressure on him, they haven't tried to get any information out of him, I find that very hard to believe. And look, obviously, it's a lot easier to protect the information if you destroy it, but you still know what you read, you know quite a bit. As he said in that interview, he is, he's worked for the NSA abroad, the DIA, the CIA, like, he knows quite a bit. I don't understand it's like I'm the only one who sees it. So maybe I do. Maybe if you was in my shoes, then you see it. I don't believe 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 it. Of oh, this guy's a saint, uh, a patriot who's done nothing wrong, versus this guy's a you know a demonic traitor who is evil. I mean, people are complicated, and you know if he's living in Russia right now uh, under their protection, so that we can't just go and grab him. Chances are they're going to get something out of him. Mm -hmm. What could that be? I don't know. Yeah, it's probably something. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it also might be worth what we learn from the leaks that he provided. But it is weird in America how we automatically assume that certain actions protect America. If you use military force, who cares about the details? You are protecting American interests. When that could not be more untrue, not only are you not necessarily protecting American interests, but you might very well be doing far more damage than simply no action whatsoever. I mean, all the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have undeniably created a new generation of terrorists in countries around the globe, not even just the countries we invaded. But the, 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 the changing views on American power and its application abroad has certainly created terrorists throughout that region. And yet, we put Bush on TV to show off the paintings he's made of world leaders, and Edward Snowden is hiding in Moscow. Agreed. And, and, and further to that point, you know, it makes me sick that someone like Dick Cheney and his buddies over at Halliburton got so insanely rich off these wars. And someone like Donald Rumsfeld, that smug son of a bitch, uh, is, you know, strutting around, you know, at fancy institutions, teaching other people what are, you know, how brilliant, brilliant he is, while someone like Edward Snowden has to basically, you know, be in exile for the part for the rest of his life and not enjoy, you know, all that's great here in America. So that's that's terrible. And you know, when I see those uh, those neocons on television speaking as if they have any authority on anything remotely related to foreign policy, and again pushing for more wars that benefit their cronies uh, financially, very handsomely, it just makes me sick. I mean, why do we even have these people on television? You know what, we should say, look, you were 100% wrong about everything you said about the Iraq war, so just shut up and go home. Well, NBC Nightly News scored the first ever Edward Snowden interview for American television viewers. And how did they honor that? Well, by censoring out his controversial statements that counter the agenda. Now, Snowden's comments were, of course, surrounding the failure of Dragnet surveillance to stop the 9-11 attacks. He censored, uh, his words were censored from the primetime broadcast and instead were buried in an hour-long clip on NBC's website. Snowden revealed that thanks to the NSA, we did indeed have all the information we needed to stop these terrorist attacks, but we didn't, and here's why. The CIA knew who these guys were. The problem was not that we weren't collecting information. Uh, it wasn't that we didn't have enough dots. It wasn't that we didn't have a haystack. It was that we did not understand the haystack that we had. Now, Snowden also talked about the fact that the government knew about the Boston Marathon bombers before that attack happened as well because Russian intelligence gave them the names of the alleged bombers. But, of course, we didn't stop that either. Now, of course, those comments were cut from primetime viewers as well, but it's not surprising that his comments were cut because he also had this to say. 
it's really disingenuous for, for the government to invoke uh, and sort of scandalize our memories, to sort of exploit the, the national trauma that we all suffered together and worked so hard to come through to justify programs that have never been shown to keep us safe but cost us liberties and freedoms that we don't need to give up and our Constitution says we should not give up.